Hey everyone, another 3ds Max video today with myself, Robin. I'm the technical director at Man & Machine here in the UK. Um, and I've done a few of these videos now and the, the idea behind them is just to show something, warts and all, really high level, um, to, to take away some of the complexity that comes with Max. It's such a great product that has so many uses across the different industries that you work with. I've been using it 20 years and I still wouldn't call myself an expert. Um, because there's so much to it. There's so many different tools for a variety of different uses. Um, and for today's video, I'm actually going to um, repeat something that I did a number of years ago in a much earlier version of Max um, that I really think is a, a great first how to get started. You're using Max, you want to create some photorealistic renders using Arnold. How do you get started? Um, and actually, it's really, really simple. You just need to think logically about what you've got and how you've got it and use the tools at your disposal. Um, a little bit of trial and error, a little bit of tweaking um, settings here and there, and generally speaking, you can get something that looks really, really nice. So we're gonna start with a completely blank scene in Arnold, uh, in Arnold, in Max. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to start by creating a scene. I want a studio ramp that I can use for my renders um, with a camera and some lights that it doesn't matter what product we sit there, it will look great. So I'm gonna go into a left view. I'm gonna to choose to create a spline, choose my line tool, and I'm going to click three points. So click first over here, hold shift, move to the right, click again, hold shift, move up, click again. So I've created three points. I'm gonna then go to the modify panel, select my line, expand it and choose my vertex, I'm gonna grab this middle vertex here and I'm gonna add a fillet to it. You could move it and change it to a bezier if you want to um, and tweak it, but it's just as easy to just add a fillet. So I'm gonna add, in this case, a fillet that looks a little bit like that, fine. And then with that line, I'm going to add a extrude or an extrude, sorry. Let's just go into a 3D view. And then I'm just gonna extrude that out a given amount, let's just say for the purpose of this, about 100, okay? Now, depending on the direction, if, if you see something like this where it's black on this side and yellow or a color on the other side, it's the wrong way around. So when you select it, you wanna make sure you flip the normals. So grab it, go to the modifier drop down, and put on a normal, which will flip the normals around. It depends on the direction that you drew the spline, but it's really easy to fix by flipping the normals. You can make this smoother and, and nicer should you want to, just spend a little bit more time with that line. If you wanted to, you could put normalized spline on there, which basically splits your line into several smaller sections, which allows you to get a nicer, more uniform, smoother spline. Maybe I'm going to drop that to a segment length of 10 before putting my extrude on and my normal, and you'll start to get smoother results. From there, I'm going to uh, add a mirror, just to create two versions of this. I'm going to mirror it around the Z plane and I'm going to do a copy. So I want something that's longer and spanning in both directions. This makes it really easy to work later. If we need to resize it, we just come a little bit and it's already centered, which is what I like. Because we've done it that way, our gizmo is already in the middle, so we can align this really nicely to our scene, zero, zero and we've got something that's looking really good. I'm just gonna drop it down ever so slightly just so it's only just above the zero point there, and we've got something that looks like that. I'm just gonna put edit hold on my scene, not fetch, edit hold. That's just gonna hold the scene where it is, and I'm also just gonna put a quick save on there just so that I've got it in my files just in case, and there's my scene. My, my ramp. Um, so what we're gonna do first and foremost is we're going to add a camera that's looking at an object on my scene. So let's go to a top view. So this is the ramp at the back here. Um, so let's go to a top view and let's add a component. Um, and I really like using the teapot because it's got a load of different um, um, surfaces to it, so let's use our good friend, the Utah teapot, stick him at the front of the ramp, slap bang in the middle. If 
like so. Let's just go to the left and make sure that he's uh, not floating and is on the floor, which he is, which is great. And there is our component. From our top view now, I'm going to create cameras and I'm going to choose to create a camera. And um, you can create a free camera, a target camera or a physical camera. Um, they're gonna give you different options and different results. The idea here is if you create a physical camera, it's going to give you real world camera settings, which might be useful for you when you're coming to um, render your components. I'm going to have my camera um, kind of looking not quite straight on, um, but something like that. So it's maybe slightly down on the, uh, on the component. And at that point, I'm going to press Alt and Enter so that I can change my perspective view to my camera by pressing C. I can then grab my camera and play around with it and see how that affects what I'm looking at. I wanna get quite close and personal to this thing. So let's say something that looks like that is pretty good. And there we have our component. I want this really smooth. So let's select our Utah teapot, go to modify. Um, and let's up the segments to at least 32, so it's nice and smooth. You could go 64 if you want to, but I'm gonna go with 32 for the purpose of this. And then we're gonna start adding some lights. Um, I'm gonna use the Arnold render, so under my render setup dialog box, I wanna make sure that I'm on Arnold. We've got Quicksilver, which uses your graphics card. Fairly decent results, very quickly. Um, Art does the same thing, uses your graphics card, fairly quick. Scanline is CPU based, um, faster than Arnold arguably, but nowhere near as good results. Arnold out of the box in Max is by far your best option. Um, there are also third party renderers as well, but we're focused on using Arnold today. So make sure Arnold is set as your renderer, then go to create, go to lights and choose to create an Arnold light from the dropdown and place one in. Um, I wanna have plenty of light in this scene, um, but how much right now, I don't actually know until I've really started looking at what the results are. I certainly want um, a good few lights above this. Um, I'm gonna start with one right above the component, and I might put that out to two, and then at least a couple coming in from behind the camera. Um, I'm gonna just click once to place my light, and I'm gonna move it so that it is um, over my component. So let's have it zero in the X so that it's centered um, and roughly over the top of my component. From there, I'm going to go into a front view <clears throat> and I'm going to bring up my um, light in the Y so that it is above my component. Something like that is absolutely fine. From there, we can choose the modify panel. So from the modify panel, I'm just gonna go into a perspective view, we can control how this light works. So is it on, is it off, is it targeted, is it not? I don't want it targeted. Um, I want it to emit shape from, um, emit light from a specific shape. I just wanna have um, like um, um, a quad. So just the shape of that is the light. Uh, I could have it coming out as a point. I could have it coming out as a disc. It really depends on what kind of light it is that you're trying to create. Um, I just want a big old square light, so this one's gonna be perfect. So we're gonna have a big square light. We've got the ability to control the spread, the resolution, um, and the size of this thing. I want it fairly big, so I'm just gonna say that we want about 50 by 50. So a nice big light just here on our screen. I want the light shape to be visible just because I've always turned it on. It's nice if you get it in there from time to time. Color is gonna be a nice white, but should you want to, we can choose a Kelvin, a preset or a texture. I'm just gonna leave this all as default for now. Intensity one, exposure level is six. How many samples for rendering? The higher, the more realistic, so to speak, but it will be slower um, and the volume samples as well. I'm leaving it all as default, all as default and leaving it as it is. I'm gonna to go to the top view, hold down shift and move it in the Y to copy it. And I'm gonna create an instance. Whatever I do to one, it will do to the other. And then from that perspective view, 
I'm going to grab this light and I'm going to rotate it using angle snaps with A, maybe around um, 65 degrees or so, so that it's looking um, down at an angle. I'm gonna move it down a little bit so it's above my camera, behind my camera, roughly speaking, pointing at the front of my component, something like that. From there, I want to start thinking about materials. Before I get into looking at what the scene is going to look like, I wanna get some Arnold friendly materials on here so that I can start to tweak it and adjust it and get the right kind of reflectivity and stuff that I want. So I'm gonna press M to open up my materials browser, of which I'm using the slate for this example here. Let's just go full screen. Um, and we wanna make sure we're using an Arnold material. So I'm gonna use a standard surface Arnold material. You can use the physical material if you want to, but I just want standard materials for the purpose of this. Now our teapot, I'm going to make um, a nice man and machine orange. Um, I'm not actually gonna put the real um, hexadecimal number in there, I'm just gonna eyeball a nice orange, like so. Something like that is fine. And I'm going to choose to select my teapot and add that material for my um, my ramp here, my studio ramp. I want um, a bit of an off-white, not quite perfect white, but a bit of an off-white. And I want to add that to not the teapot to my surface in the background. And then from there, to get a pretty good instant reaction of, of what this is going to look like, I'm gonna turn on Active Shade. Active Shade uses Arnold to render in my viewport. Um, if I press Alt and W, I can do that in a much smaller window, which actually makes it nice and quick. Um, mm. And if I go into P so that I can um, rotate my view around without affecting the camera, I can see clearly this is too bright, um, but actually edges and things like that are already looking super sharp, which is great. I'm getting some shadows. I'm gonna drop this down a little bit so that it's, um, it's inside the floor. And the great thing about using this active shade is I can start making tweaks. It's gonna slow my machine down a little bit, but I can literally just start bringing this so that it's floating, should I want to, or on the floor, should I want to. I can literally just tweak and adjust and start getting results. Something like that looks a little bit nicer, um, maybe a tiny bit more. I'm just kind of doing this all by eye. I'm trying to get a slightly nicer result at the bottom there. Not quite as sharp shadow. Perfect. Um, and then I wanna start thinking about these lights. So firstly, I said to you earlier, I like having the light visible. If I zoom out and spin it round, that's what it means by light shape visible. It shows you the light, um, which is really nice. Um, but I can grab the light at the top here and I can start moving it around. I can move it closer to my component and using my active shade, I can start seeing how that's affecting the component here. The further away, the darker and more widespread. The closer, the more targeted that light is. Again, with this one, I can move it further away to make it darker and wider spread. I can move it closer to make it really intense. So really, what we wanna do is start coming in and tweaking and adjusting our lights so that they suit the kind of environment that we want to. So this one here that's currently looking down, I'm gonna make it smaller. Um, it's at the moment, it's an instance. So whatever I do to one, I do to the other. And I, I could come in and say, well, do you know what? Just lower the intensity, just make the intensity um, 0.5 rather than one. And we'll start to instantly get a reduction to the light that we have in our model. But actually, I don't wanna do that. I wanna have um, something that is, more scaled appropriately. So I'm gonna right click this light and make it unique. And with this light, I'm gonna make it smaller. Um, we had 50 by 50. I'm gonna reduce this to the default properties, which was 24 by 24. And you can see that by making the light smaller, it's not as bright because it's a smaller light. So this one I'm gonna put, so it's kind of aligned to the top of my ramp. And this one is gonna be far closer. I'm already getting something that looks a little bit nicer. 
I'm gonna move my camera up a little bit. I wanna look down on the product a little bit more. So let's just move my camera up a little bit more. I can see more of the shadow there and see exactly what's going on. And again, it's really starting to look pretty good. If I grab this light um, that's at the top of the scene at the moment, I'm gonna make it a bit smaller, um, not quite 24 by 24, but maybe on this light, let's go to uh, 35 squared. And I'm going to move it to the left. You can see the direction of the shadow changes because the light is now on this side. But I'm gonna create two of them. So I'm gonna create one over here, hold down shift and create a duplicate over here. As an instance, click OK. We can really start playing with and controlling the amount of light coming out of our scene um, and making it the, the way that we want to work. Again, a lot of this for me is a bit of trial and error. Yes, you're gonna learn what works and what doesn't, but we, we kind of wanna come in and, and tweak it so that it's suiting our scene. And if you're making renders of products, having this um, scene set up with a product that's of average size, it really allows you then to have a scene that you can save and you can come back to and replace the product in the middle. And that's really what we're looking to be able to do. Let's grab our teapot. And once this is finished saving, we're just gonna rotate the teapot around ever so slightly so that it's not square on. Maybe we're gonna have the spout pointing towards us a little bit more. Um, and, and really all I'm trying to do is just look at different scenarios. I'm making sure that the shadows that we have are, are nice soft shadows with a mixture of harder and softer shadows, which we have. Um, the edges are, are crisp. It's still a little bit washed out. It's a little bit bright, but it's not too bad. I might actually, if anything, just grab this component here um, and just make the light even smaller still, maybe about 18 by 18. Less is more when you're tweaking. Um, just keep that in mind. If you make a big change, it's difficult to know exactly what it's changed. But um, in this case, that's looking really nice. I'm quite happy with that. I'm gonna select this component at the front. I'm gonna come down and I'm gonna up its samples and I'm gonna up its volume samples. This will slow down the render for sure, but it will give me something that is, um, it's gonna take a little bit more time working through and calculating that render. We've got a density of color um, and shadows and things like that. Um, I, again, I'm pretty happy with the result that I'm getting. I, I think it's pretty good. We can choose our camera. And with our camera, we've got a load of different options on here. Um, and we can choose how we want this camera to react with what's going around. So we can change the aperture. Um, we can change the focal length. And we can start controlling how this camera is going to work based on the way in which we might photograph this object in reality, um, which is really nice. So we could change the exposure, make it lighter, make it brighter without having to affect the rest of the scene. Because, because I've got active shade on there, um, it is a little bit slow. Let's just turn that off um, and just reduce that focal length about there. Uh, the aperture, I'm gonna go from eight to five and I'm gonna turn active shade back on, and you'll see that that's much, much brighter, almost quite washed out. And again, you've, you've gotta be careful here with your settings that you don't go too far, and that you don't overly saturate or overly um, um, adjust something on your model. Let's turn off active shade again. I'm gonna wish that I hadn't have upped the samples on those, uh, those shadow, uh, shadows, lights now. Let's just wait for it to catch up. Okay, so it's caught up. Let's just turn off active shade again, put that back up to about eight. Exposure value, um, we're gonna try that on. Uh, never remember with exposure, whether it's lighter or darker. Let's soon find out. Pretty good, I'm pretty happy with that. So we've got something that's coming out really nicely. Um, so from there, I'm just gonna put a save on the file. And I'm gonna go into my render settings. And then on my render setup, I'm gonna say that I want to do a 1920 by 1080 full render. And the beauty of Arnold is how simple it is. 
I can go onto the Arnold render and I've just got simple dialog boxes up and down for quality. It's really, really easy to use if you compare it to other renders on the market. Um, and it does go quite in depth. But all I'm going to do is we're currently on um, anti-aliasing. It's going to render a preview anti-alias and then it will keep going over this many samples. The higher the samples, the better quality the render. And again, I'm going to leave everything on defaults for the purpose of this. Um, it's going to be quite, quite straightforward. Um, so I'm going to leave everything as it is, and I'm going to go ahead and press render. I'm going to open this up on this screen, if it will let me. The benefit of using a capture card is I can still record whilst um, doing a high quality render. I've lost my, uh, my ability to move things for the moment. So let's just give it a couple of seconds while it renders. It's about 50% through. Um, and then I'll move it up onto the main screen and show you what it looks like. Um, but generally speaking, it's gonna go through and it's gonna render a load of different samples. And it depends on the settings that you've gone and selected. You'll see um, a little box. Here, let me move it up now. Um, go around your screen. I'm running on 4K on this, so hence why it's uh, quite small. But again, the, the quality of this for a handful of seconds, it's looking really good. And all we've done is drawn a simple ramp, placed a few simple lights, um, made it quite bright like a photo shoot, uh, and gone ahead and hit render. If I'd have spent 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, tweaking and adjusting and tweaking, and, and probably doing a bit more with the textures, if I'm being honest, we'd have something that's really, really nice. Um, we're going to come up and maybe do another sample on the anti-aliasing, another sample on the diffuse. Um, maybe we're going to uh, turn on adaptive sampling. Um, we're going to use global light sampling. And we're going to say go. This time, it's going to take a little bit longer because I've upped a load of samples. Um, but again, you'll see all the different boxes shoot around your screen. That's all of the cores that your processor has going away and working. And they will go over and over and over the geometry, depending on how many anti-aliasing passes you've told it to do. Um, and it's going to go through and create a, uh, a render for you that looks really, really nice. Um, this particular one is going to take a little bit of time because I really upped the samples there. Um, and turn on some other options like the global light sampling to up the quality of the lights, the adaptive sampling, um, with, which is just going to make the anti-aliasing, which is the noise at the edge of the product. Um, anything around um, the edges here, the better anti-aliasing that we have, the smoother those lines will look, um, rather than maybe being quite sharp. Um, and again, this is going to sit there and render now, already looking pretty good, but only 2% through. So really, that's what I wanted to share, um, how to get started using the Arnold renderer. And again, hopefully I've shown you that it's not scary. It's actually really easy to start producing something that looks pretty good. Just a little bit of time, a little bit of effort. And the benefit of using this scene is it's just a teapot on a, on a photo studio ramp. That teapot you can then replace with anything. And yes, you might need to adjust the light position, add some more lights, especially if you've got something, I don't know, like, a, like an alloy wheel, if it was laying down, you'll have quite a lot of shadow inside the, um, all of the gaps and the crevices inside of that wheel. So you might need to get some more lights in there, just play around with it and work with it. Um, but it's, it's very easy nowadays to get something that looks good. Take your time, tweak it, save the scene, and then you've got something that you can use time and time again. Um, and from me for this video, that's it. Thank you very much for watching. I hope it helps and I will see you next time. Take care. Goodbye.